what's missing curfew. It's when you kind of play guilty, but you show up. How nice is a green light on the road, though? No practice tomorrow, no playing, just go. Scotty Upshaw in the clear, and he scores! One in front, scores! A few laughs, a little bit of fun, and obviously a lot of hockey talk. You're listening to Missing Curfew. With our lads. Up dog, my man, fella Friday. Oh, it sure is, bud. This one's a little different than most. Uh, how it's we, how not as feel? good as most. How are we feeling, buddy? I'm uh, feeling all right. I wore my, my cafe yeah. uh, shirt. I, I butchered that tea a bit. That, that, the, the, the thing's too big. Eh, oh, that's okay. I bit. just I felt like I, I'm on a little bit of a heater with the parlays on DraftKings because I, I did pick one the other day that Unfortunately, Connor, um, he got mine a little late. He got my picks a little late. You put in one, I put in one. Yeah. And boy, if my Edmonton Oilers and my Leon Dreisaitl didn't didn't smack a plus eight hundred. Well, that's how you bet. I know. That's why, like moving forward, I talked to you yesterday. Like, I think you're our guy. I think you're our part. By the way, Broadway Jimmy Scoops is looking down on you, smiling I'm at how much how much heat you got to be. Like, <laughs> typical updog fashion. I'm like, what? Well, well, you'll be texting me or whatever. Like, I got the over. I got this. I got that. I took live bet. If they win by if they win by four, if it's four nothing, I got a plus twenty five hundred. I'm like, my head's spinning, bro. I, my head's spinning. But yeah, no, I just, you're doing I, pretty I, well, right? I was feeling it. Uh, I was feeling it up till about yesterday when I got to the first green. Um, <laughs> which we'll get to. And then last night, watching this, you know, this hockey game go back and forth, Dallas, it was the only game on last night, obviously, but, you know, uh, I had the over and I, I, you hit it? I waited it out. I hit the over, but I got greedy. I got greedy. I wanted it. it I, Dallas goes up one midway through the second. I think hitting a minus 250, you know, for a G note was, was a smart play. Yeah. I went back on the bus. And uh, it wasn't. It wasn't. It was a fucking onslaught of of uh, Colorado and Kale McCarr, and, and then all of a sudden I'm in one. I would say. I would say from going just off of you in loops because I don't live bet. Enough, clearly not enough. But I would say this: what you guys, in my opinion, if a team goes down two nothing, you know, especially like the Oilers, let's say they go down two nothing or whatever, then those odds go way up to plus whatever. Comebacks in the NHL playoffs now are they're they're every night. Yeah. So I would think if you're watching this hockey game. And you know you like one team, and they get scored on first. Even I noticed you and Loops do that a lot too. Right? They go down one nothing. Now we bet it. That to me is where you can yeah. really get some good odds because one goal in the NHL is not like it used to be. It's like you think one goal scared twenty uh, ninety seven and twenty nine. No, they're like give us one power play. Yeah, and we'll get that back. Yeah, neither you know twenty nine or eight. Yeah, it's yeah, it's a joke. I, I mean, you, you got a lot of heat. You got a lot of action. Though. You got a lot of skin in the game. And I respect yeah. it, buddy. I respect it. <laughs> uh, listen, we, we went up to the Cravens. Listen, we're we're honest guys on this podcast. When we play well, we're going to talk about it. We play bad, we're going to play talk about it. We played fucking horrendous. However, wow, it's humiliating. But we we took the we we. It's not like we like you know went out all like late late last night and got banged up and I showed up hungover and I'm like oh dog I let you down because my I was my. I took everything I could to, to feel good, and I felt great coming in. All right, I got two IVs. I got a nice massage at the Bay Club. I got a good night's sleep. We took the Sprinter van up. We had a nice breakfast. I got to swim in. You did yoga. I was a little concerned about my range session. I was hitting a lot of them thin. I'm like, fuck, stay down at all. And then we just we had a tough first hole up, dog, and, and, and the putters went cold on the boys. But yeah. t- tough format. It was tough format, yeah. The, the alternate shot, you pick a hole, I pick a hole. Um, but we started off shooting ourselves in the foot with, you know, changing it up. I played this. We played the tournament. The Cravens. We played it five years ago. We qualify. We oh. shoot seventy two net. Uh, you playing evens, me playing odds, and then for some reason we just decided to switch it up, and we screwed it up. It started early. I, I missed a putt on one that was the, not no, even, it's, it's not started, even the length it of my started, cigar. It started before that. So we decide that you're going to hit on one, and one for you fellas out there, it's a short par four. So the up dog, what'd you hit, five iron? I hit a f- yeah. six iron? Right down the middle. He just stripes it. And uh, the night before, so this would be Tuesday night, all I'm thinking is that first wet shot, it's going to be 80 yards. Like, uh, I just got to trust it, just trust it. And fuck, you put me out there in the middle of the fairway, and I get up there, and Dana's like, you got 82 yards. <laughs> I'm like, fuck. I'm like, all right. And I'm nervous as fuck, dude. I'm like, yeah, my heart's going, and I'm like, I'm stepping over top of it, and I'm like, I don't want to step away off it now because now I'm that guy, but maybe I should have, and I'm like, just smooth it. Well, if I don't blade it in the back bunker and put you just like this, and you're just fucked. You hit a hell of a shot to get it out, and then I cozied it up there. Yeah, and you kind of Herman Munson one on the It was boys. the size of my pen. I swear <laughs> to God, it wasn't the length of – it was four 
five inches and I tugged it. The best one's the best one. So we make six on uh, par four and uh, we're walking to number two and up Doug grabs his car. He's like, fuck up, you got a lighter? You got a lighter? <laughs> I'm like, no, it's in my other bag. I'm like, someone get this guy a lighter. He needs it. We part two and then I fucked up three again. I hit one, another, bladed another wedge in the back bunker and gave you even worse lie. No, I just, it, it started, you know, we felt good. I thought we looked good. We looked our, great, our I thought. Were great. I thought we looked great. You know, shout out to Adidas Golf. We we looked sharp. Um, but, you know, it, it just, it was one thing after another. And then, you know, the the group that we were playing with, they were having a good time. They're laughing, father, son. Uh, oh, they were just kid. hamming I, I just looked at him. I'm like, do you got a doobie? I, I need some. <laughs> and sure as shit on 10, I just have a little quick puff. And I then I felt good. Yeah. I was actually like, okay, you know, win or lose here. We're going to go down having a good time. Yeah. Well, after nine, we we had to, we would have had to shoot even par and better out back. So I was like, let's just have fun and try to go low out here. And we played all right. We made we made one bad. that we, we, What did we make? Triple on that par five. But now we played better on the back. I thought so. Um, but the best was these two father son beauties from San Gabriel who are great guys, stoners. This old man smelled like fucking Big Lebowski, the dude. I'm like, look at this guy, he's fucking beauty. They shoot the scrappiest, as ugliest fucking like 38 or 39 in the front, and they're getting like 10 pops. So they're like, they're in the midst of being in the championship flight. We play 10, up dog has a puff with her, a puff with her, <laughs> what, was it a pipe? I'm just, yeah. Yeah. I'm like, these guys are not weed pen guys. This is going to be some flower for the it's good, good old fashioned bud. And we get to 11, and there's the buffet line, and these two guys can't help themselves. <laughs> Over they go. They're just baked. I'm like, I can't believe they're eating up, dog. Like, if it was me and you were playing good, I'm like, let's keep going. Like, there's nothing yeah. worse for me when you're playing well if you're going for a hot dog. Unless, you know, you need a rally dog and you're playing bad. We're waiting on the tee for the guy. We're like, hey, you're up. He comes running over with half fucking ketchup on his face. And what did he do? Pump it in the bunker? They made, like, on the par three, they made, like, five or yeah. six. Yeah, they went downhill after that. Yeah. They were laughing too. They, they were. Yeah, it was a good day out there. And shout out to uh, our boy Alistair, the head pro Work there. Guy. Great guy, hockey guy. He's from Scotland, um, but just a quality head pro. I mean, he kept our day loose. And thank you, Alistair, because you brought it us. There were screwdrivers. Yeah. Before the one would finish, we had another one, fresh one. He's bringing them out on the card. He's telling us where you know where the putt breaks. Didn't matter, buddy. I wasn't going to hit the line anyway. Um, but just a quality tournament. Great guys. Great club. It's cool, yeah. It's, Love to be playing there this weekend. I'll tell you what, I you know I was almost going to text Steeler, but he's on the live tour now where there's no more cuts, so he doesn't care about cuts anymore. But I, mean, I often wondered what it must feel like to miss the cut, right? I mean, probably like getting put on waivers or healthy scratch, which I I know both feelings very well. But missing the cuts got to suck. And at home last night, watching my Avalanche do their thing, I, I still was just going over every shot that I fucked up on. You, know, I'm like, how did I leave that one in the bunker? How did I blade that wedge? How did I hit that driver over? Like, so I'm I'm, sh- I'm saying if. I was on the PGA Tour and I missed the cut. I'd be going out to the bar trying to just drink, like drink out, like just forget about it. Drowning your drowning sorrows. my sorrow. Yeah, I would not be sitting at home thinking about every shot. I'd be like, let's go try to get laid and get drunk or something. Yeah, I mean, it's like in hockey where you come in and you just know you're going to get lit up the next day by the coach. <laughs> yeah, you're exactly. like, I don't even need to get lit up by anybody. I know how bad I was. Exactly. Yeah, you know, just please, just save me the grace here, save me the time. I yeah, I would say though we 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 handled it pretty good. Like yeah. we didn't we didn't you know we were down a little bit at the front and then we just tried to battle our way through it kind of just started making fun of ourselves eh? it's like yeah, i thought we handled it well we i thought got we it too. we could have got a little aggressive a little angry but we we just laughed i want we were point, that bad that we just laughed about yeah i thought What's better What's when better? you when you missed the one on uh whatever doesn't matter and you threw the putter i was like Ooh, there's a chance up dog might snap this not uh, as a brand new putter. I know, I know. lab golf putter it's a thousand bucks I, I i i would cry if i did that um what's worse though missing the cut by like one or two or just just going out like that Probably missing it by one or two. At, worse, at least this way, we were, we 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 were already booking our flight to fucking totally. where we were going. Yeah, Cancun. If we were the PJ Tour, I'd be like, I'll be text your manager, get the bird going. We'll go to Cabo. We're we're out of this one. Um, but I'll tell you what, for you fellows out there, and you can throw me in this category. Like you think, oh, some days you're good at golf. Play in a tournament where you got to put everything out, and just how much it grinds on you. Like I, I give these guys so much more credit, man. I know. Like, and I I had a lot of tap there because. <laughs> <laughs> I hey, in your defense, so dude, I mean, a couple putts. I'm like just trying to get it close for you, and it just went like five, six, seven feet by. And I'm like, oh, poor up dog's gonna try to make this again. And I'm like, you know, because I've been there when your putter's in the cold, and you're like, ah, you give me another six footer, O'Brien. I'm like, it was just, it was a snowball effect. But listen, we're gonna go back next year. We're gonna go back to our old format. We're not playing the practice round, and we're gonna be back in this thing. But good luck to everybody up there. Our big Canyon boys are going today. Thomas J. Doherty, Todd Pickup, Cart, Benny Mack, Frome Dog. 
Um, Shanny, baby, go white get lightning. Him, go get them, boys. Uh, up dog, back to Stanley Cup playoff news here. Brad Marchant, who I absolutely love as a player. I know you do too. Love to have him on your team. Would hate to play against him. He's made a hell of a career of that. His comments today about the Stanley Cup playoffs, you're, you're out there trying to injure guys. And I loved what he was trying to say because, like, you're not going out there to try to physically put somebody in the hospital or something like that, but you're trying to you're trying to go out there, be physical, and if you can take somebody out of the lineup, a key player, that's a huge advantage to your team. So I loved his honesty about that. Yeah, uh, we saw it with 97 in Edmonton after you take the cross check after the game. He said, listen, it's heated playoffs. We're in a battle here. We have to we, – we are engaging with each other, and that's just hockey. Now, Brad Marchant's a guy who's been on the receiving side of it this playoffs, but – you know, look back at, at his success, you know, he finishes his checks. He makes it hard on other teams, best defensemen, best players. He's always out there against the best players. So I think he realizes that, listen, Sam Bennett's a guy that he's a good player. Fuck yeah. He's a great player. He's effective. I love Come him. playoff time, he gets even better. Plays his size, finishes checks, can score, can fight. Now he's, you know, he's dealing with a little ailment on his hand. But, uh, but what he did, he got away with one and call it what it is. Could have been a penalty during the game. Maybe a one-gamer if it's on Pasternak, which you mentioned yeah. Pasternak. But it was effective. And yeah. in hockey, you know, I remember playing against the Blackhawks. Like, every time I got out on the ice against Duncan Keith, I had to put him through the glass. And it had to be clean or I'm getting in the box and then I might not play again. So on a personal level, I wouldn't want that to happen, nor on a team level. So if you get away with it in the playoffs, that's hockey. It's just as important as scoring goals – uh, big moments are playing physical. Big moments are getting the energy in the crowd, and that's from big hits. And you know, if, if you can get the worm stick up in yeah. a guy's face, and just just when I him. chirped the worm about not oh. being fucking greasy, got greasy for me. I oh, love look, it. At the, look at the battle. So, it. so look at the battles inside the battle. Look at like Zadarov and Kane. Look at the way Bennett and you know McAvoy are going at it now. Like, the, there's all these little mental warfare in yeah, playoffs within the game. And I always. I look back and I'm rambling on here, but I look back at like the way in Philly, the way John Stevens uh, and, you know, Craig Berube and our coaching staff used to set up each round. And we made it to the conference finals that year. But each round, when you got that sheet of paper on the other, on that other team's lineup, yeah, yeah. you had one guy. Obi, you have fucking Dave Bolin. Every time he's out on the ice or Bufflin, Bufflin. you got to be yeah. bigger, stronger, more effective than him. Stay out of the box, get him in the box. And, and you know, I'm looking at it and I'm like, okay, I got. Chris Kunitz, every time he's on the ice, I got to be tapping him in the back of the legs, giving him an elbow, whatever the case may be. That's that's the way hockey's treated in the playoffs. You got to be, yeah. You got to find a way to get in. And there. it's such a fine line between being exactly what you want, but not hurting your team, right? Yeah. And that's what I struggle with at times. But I remember, I'll never forget my second year going into the second round against Chicago. AV came in, and I never thought he's like, all right, boys, Obi, you go after, you got Buffalo first game. Hordachuk, you got Eager. Bieksa, you got Burrish. We're going out of game one. Challenge him right away, and I'm like, "Are you fucking? Yeah. This is unbelievable, Av yeah. or Ripper. You got somebody." And it was just, we went out and challenged them. They didn't want to fight, but I was just like, "That was our way of saying, let's get her going right off the get go here." Like, yeah. Av wanted to mix something up, and I I respect him a lot for that because he's like, "All right, boys, let's go get these guys." Yeah. Um, but it's a fine line. And I just loved his honesty because you know sometimes guys are scared to say what they feel, and I and I love Brad Marchand's game, and I. I would love to have him on my team, like we said, and I just thought that was pretty cool for him to come out and say that up, yeah, dog. So, uh, on some sad news here, uh, we lost an absolute legend back home, Dutchie Darren Duchishin. Great suits, just jacked always, eh? Yeah, jacked, yeah. good hair. Uh, we lost Dutchie at fifty-seven, um, prostate cancer. He's been battling it for a while. I used to love watching him, man. Yeah. He made TSN fun. Like I said, great suits, good hair. He was every every week. He looked like he was getting more and more jacked. So. Uh, uh, this is a sad one. Up dog, fifty seven's way too young, my man. Yeah, this is man. I uh, I look back like he went through Edmonton. He went through like CTV News in Edmonton when I was a young kid. I mean, this is thirty years now. He's been with TSN, which is incredible. I mean, three decades of him sharing sports, very heartfelt. Had a great, a uh, great smile. You know, he was always super uplifting coming through our tube in Canada. Uh, he was a proud Canadian. He's a proud sports broadcaster. Um, I actually met his son one time with my brother Brento. Um, we were playing Beersby, and his son could rip a frisbee, man. Like, yeah. yeah. And and I always, you know, I always like telling this kid, I was like, man, your old man's a great. He's a great guy. He's a great guy for hockey. He's a great guy for sports. And, yeah. Um. This this is really sad. And you you just look like fifty seven years old. It's too young. It's man. too young. He it's almost. Young. He was the first guy to me growing up that made like, 
being a sportscaster or whatever you want to call it, sports anchor, cool kind yeah. of, right? Like he was, yeah. when he started doing it and, and, and the way he's, his, his swagger and his charisma and his jokes he would have, I mean, he just, he was the first guy that was like, wow, that's a good gig. This yeah. guy's good at it. He makes it fun to watch. Yeah, like him and James Duffy have been doing this. Forever. James has been doing it forever. Yeah, it was sad today watching James give the oh, little okay. monologue of him and, um, you know, super sad, but we're, you know, we're big fans here at Missing Curfew and, you know, definitely thinking about him and his family today. Yeah, our condolences go to uh, Dutchie and his family. Welcome back to Missing Curfew, up dog tea times, fella. Fellas, presented by Adidas Golf, made for wherever you play. Boys, check this stuff out. It is tasty, tasty, Ooh. quality stuff. I saw Ludwig Odberg this morning. I'm watching the PGA Championship at home. I woke up, didn't go for a swim. You know, still fighting this cold off up dog, you know? Think about colds. You, you think you got her licked and then you wake up, you're like, I don't quite have her licked just yet. But Ludwig, Ludwig he's looking sharp out there. I, I like these Adidas... No collars. They just have the three little buttons, no, like a little collar, yep. and just a nice little, yeah, little separation nice. there. Little separation. Yeah, huge uh, lapel. Yeah. Just a nice tight. Keep it tight. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. I love it. That guy's a stud, man. Dude, he is. How do you, how do you, how do you he's plus it? three. Plus three. Ooh. But, man, he hit a uh, uh, number three's a, a long par three. Well, not for too long for that. It was playing 203. He hit this just little. It didn't even move up. So it was just like whoo, right at it. Um, enjoy the PGA Championship this year. I got Rory's off to a good start. Uh, Kepka's hanging in there. Thomas shot two under. My guys are off to a good start. Valhalla is playing uh, wet today, up dog, and no win for those guys. It's target practice, bro. But anyways, different tee times here today because everyone pushed her to a, a game six here, which is great for us because we're in the content business and we get to watch more hockey. But up dog, tee times presented by Adidas. Who do you think? We'll be first on the list next week when we come in here for a little Tuesday session. Yeah, we're in some exciting moments right now, and uh, you know, in this quarterfinals here, the 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 chase for their Eastern and Western Conference. But to me, Obi, I think uh, that the Florida Panthers right now have put themselves in a great spot. They got a couple days rest going into Boston for Game Six. I see the Bees being a team that are going to be unfortunately stuck in a situation, bud, where. You know, if they can't get Bart Marchant back, you know, they had a gutsy, gutsy game five win to push this to six. But gutsy. I, the Florida Panthers right now, um, you know, we haven't even seen Matty Kachuk at his best. Bobrovsky's been kicking. Um, you look at the way their D are jumping in the play. Barkov's been, you know, a success story here this playoffs. Uh, Varhage hasn't really done much this round. But, you know, I, I just see the firepower for Florida. Uh, coming on here in Game Six, I, I think the bees are going to be in one. But so you think the bees are going to be looking for a tea time at uh, Old Sandwich in Boston? Old sandwich. Well, they're uh, hit up Kevin Hayes for a tea time at Old Sandwich. Yeah, yeah. It sounds like that's uh, to me. It's going to be. I, I I agree. I agree. I think I think Florida is going to put the old Boston Brews in the tea times. I will say this in anticipation for someone going on the tea times. I think the two day rest for the New York Rangers is so huge for them. Right? They had an opportunity to sweep. Then they had an opportunity to win game five. Now you have two days off before you got to go to Raleigh. It's almost like up dog. If we were in that dressing room, we'd just be like, hey, boys, let's just reset here, yeah. right? We got an extra day. We're up 3 2. You know, we got home ice, you know, opposed to, oh, we got to get back on the plane right after the you know, next day and go down there and play. Yeah. I just think that extra day, I, I bet the Hurricanes tonight up dog. But if they lose, I do believe, fella, as an ex player, that that extra day was huge for the Rangers. Yeah. You would think the momentum in a series. You know, they hadn't done, there has been a, a, a two round sweep to start off the playoffs, I think, ever, right? So yeah. you look at this and probably Shesterkin, not. who had been odd, you know, odds makers, probably the favorite to win Con Smythe, the way his team has been playing in front of him, how many shots he's uh, did these miraculous saves so, so far throughout the second round. He got lit up in the third period last, last round. Finally. You don't want him, you know, Having to just take that momentum, play the next day, uh, that that could affect a guy like that. I think the break, like you just said, is more for mental toughness. Um, get your body right, get your mind right, and then you know this is going down to Caneland, and it's it's going to be a fantastic. Yeah, game. I can't wait to watch tonight. But we both agree the Boston Bruins. So if yeah. you're in Boston, New England, save a couple tea times for the lads. Hey, the boys are going to be looking for it next week. But what what a gutsy win by them, up dog. Gutsy. DraftKings Playoff Recap Fella. Presented by our friends at DraftKings. Stay tuned because you'll hear more about DraftKings and all it has to offer throughout our show. DraftKings, the crown is yours, fellas. 
All right, up dog. Let's talk Canucks Oilers. We'll we'll save Calvin Picard for get this guy a beer. But listen, two two, you hammered the Oilers already tonight. You got a parlay cafe out there. What? T- listen, talks. I love him, and he continues to say, you know, we can't win with twelve guys. He's so right. Uh, I would expect Hoaglander to be back in the lineup tonight for them. I haven't checked, but listen, the second line's got to get going. Pedersen, uh, I believe Hoaglander is going to be back in. Up dog, it comes down to their second line, and I got it right up here. Uh, Tox has made some adjustments. He's shuffling the deck. He's going Suter, Miller, Besser, Hoaglander, Lindholm, Pedersen, which I I don't mind putting Pedersen on the wing. Dakota Joshua, Bluger, Garland, um, and then his fourth line of Pud Colson, Deep Adjust, Deep. Possessi and Amon. Amon. I like this. You got to shuffle the deck. I, I don't love splitting up the Lindholm, Joshua, Garland line because it's arguably been the best line for the Canucks. But this is this is talk saying, hey, all right, guys aren't good enough. I got to get Pedersen going. And this is what he's going with. But listen, they can't win this series without Pedersen getting going, I don't think. Yes. That's where I'm going with that. No, I, I agree. That press conference was something of a head turner, to be honest. Uh, very disinterested Pedersen. Um, count his money, count his money, getting question on his effort, on his heart, uh, yeah, on why things aren't going well. But you know, I, I just, what I see as the difference going into a game five tied two two back in Vancouver tonight is that the Edmonton Oilers to me have not played a complete hockey game yet with two of the best players in the world now split up with a defense pairing in CC and Nurse now split up, and yeah. you said this last, you know, you're last, welcome, last cough. Show. You're welcome, cough. I see this team as a more rounded team that can come at you in different waves. Uh, Evan Bouchard, who has you know elevated his game in this series, he's recorded a point in each of his last ten road games, which is is pretty special. Um, I just see that the the Oilers are going to really be a team that's going to. Find their game. You're, you're, you're all in on the. Oil I am, line. but they they haven't played a complete game yet, and and we expect them to. Uh, you know, Picard coming in, doing his thing. His parents are in the crowd. Uh, he just is basically saying, "I don't give a fuck." You know, whether it's my first playoff game or not, I'm going to come out there. And kicks. He he did what he had to do to win the game. He didn't let any. He didn't let in any bad goals, and that's what Skinner was doing. He was deflating the team. So, um, I don't know, Obs. I I'm still. Throwing my money where my mouth is. I like the Oilers here. Um, they're going on the road. It's going to be a great game tonight. Yeah, it's a heartbreaker for the Canucks. They like, tied up 2-2. Best for throws in the net. And then, you know, Shelos played so good. It's hard to, like, criticize this kid at all. Like, through a screen, from the point. But any, anything that goes through a goalie, to me, under him, through him, I don't know. Maybe I'm, you know, too hard on these goalies. But you got to fucking squeeze that, I think. But he's been unbelievable. Uh, it will be rocking tonight. I think the Canucks win game five here, fellas, so we'll see what happens. Florida-Boston, touched on it a little bit during our tea time segment. I think it's over in six. Mark my words here. Draft Kings, lock of the night. Panthers win. Matty Kachuk scores. This series is over in six. Listen, they came out in game five and were just flat as all fuck, and we're going to get to Paul Maurice and get this guy a beer. They were flat. I couldn't believe it, Uppy. Everything that they went through last year on the other side of it, being down 3-1 and coming back and winning, I thought they were going to come out, and I put my money where my mouth was, I thought they were going to come out and just put the Boston Bruins down and out. Bruins, what an effort. Gutsy win. Charlie McAvoy, a guy, I believe I I threw him on the milk carton earlier in the series, played an unbelievable game, scored a big goal, um, played physical, Swayman did his thing. They almost looked like... They had, you don't want to say nothing to lose because you're in the Stanley Cup playoffs, but well, let's go, boys. Let's just play and see what happens. Yep. Gutsy, gutsy win for the Bees, man. I agree. I agree. And, uh, you know, you look at Monty. Monty going in said, fuck, boys. Just lay it all out there. Lay it all on the line. Uh, we got nothing to lose. We've had some, you know, tough calls go against us. Uh, tides have to turn. It's going to be a great game. Boston Gardens is going to be rocking. Uh, but, great fans. But as you say, we haven't seen the Panthers you know, best players be their best players yet. Yeah. And when that happens, it's uh, it's turn the lights out. Yeah, I, I I would say to Chucky too. I don't text him during the series. I only text him after when they win and say congrats. Um, get to the fucking net. Listen to the up dog. Get to that blue paint. You know, he, he's so good down low and behind the net. I get it. And he's looking to dish. But I, I like to see him get back to that front of that net and get greasy and tip one in. But I think Chucky scores and Boston wins. I mean, sorry, and Florida wins to end that in six. Up dog last night, Kale McCarr. We're gonna get to him and get this guy a beer. Also, 
What a win by the Avs. Nate McKinnon showed up. McCarr led the charge. I thought that was over, brother. I bet the Avs just because they're my team, and I was thought I was going down with the ship. Uh, what, a, what a gutsy win. Uh, back to ball arena. It, it's just, you. I guess, ups. you realize how hard it is to close out these teams. Yeah. Right? You've been there. Back's against the wall. Let's find a way, boys. I know, and, and what you said yesterday on the way to golf, you're like, they have to win. Is McCarr and McKinnon not going to, like, with their backs against the wall, are they not going to give their best effort and get this team into a game six? And I... I thought they were a team that was down and out. Obviously, the news with Natushkin this week and, you know, a, a tough showing at home in game four. I thought they were down and out, Obes, but, you know, what a gutsy third period um, to be down in the game. You know, I think they even got their first lead in the series. Yeah, game. first lead in the series. Is that nuts? Yeah, because they came back and won yeah. it. Uh, they win an overtime game? Yeah, they, yeah, yeah, Miles Wood fucking coast to coast. Right, right? so yeah. this is their first, they feels like their first lead. Feels like a month ago, doesn't I it? thought Zach Parise played a great, I thought Middlestead, who we just, dude, I we ripped just him. chirped. I just chirped him on the Sprinter van. He comes back, what a what a great goal, go ahead, goal in the third. Um, Zach Parise looks like he's playing hurt, but he's, you know, and he's come out and said this yeah. is his last playoffs. Let's go back to that Middlestead point just for a second. And, yeah. and listen, I, I said to you yesterday when we were licking our wounds coming home together, yes, that God, could the Avalanche use Bull Byron right now? And Casey Middlestad, maybe he's going to turn into the second line center that you know they've been trying to replace since Kadri left. And he proved me wrong last night; scored a big goal. But that team is different without Bull Byron. They miss him. I mean, they miss him on that back end. And, and he was one of my favorite Avs. And we'll see how the trade plays out, up dog. But Middlestad did did prove me wrong. But I still believe that they were a better team with Bull Byron. Yeah, especially when Taves is hurt or oh, not yeah. as not himself. Like him flipping the puck over the glass last night. You know, in the middle of the second period, that that's a play. You know, Devon Taves doesn't make very very often. You can tell he's not himself, and that's those are big minutes against a big depth uh, offensive team in Dallas. Where you know you can, f- it's tough to replace a guy like Bo Byron. Fuck, he's so good. I, know. I love that kid. He's over in Prague having a time. He's going to come on. As it's going to come on, yeah. Last but not least, Rangers, Carolina. We touched on it in tea times a little bit. Listen, the fucking Carolina Hurricanes power plays one for 20. They've given up, I think, three shorties or two shorties. So they've given up more goals than they've got. If that power play was anything better, this series would be over the other way. Um, but up dog, when you're down 3 nothing to climb your way back, I don't know. Well, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm hoping. I'm hoping they can get it done. But something just deep down says the Rangers are going to find a way to get this done. But I, I think it's going it seven. No, I, already, I already hammered it. You did. It. I already hammered it. Yeah. I think it's going seven. What's the line on that tonight? Big time, big favors. Uh, I got, think I got them at wise 165 or something, the Hurricanes. Wow. How the Hurricanes were fucking favored going into MSG for game five, I'll still never know to this day. President's Cup champs, down 3-1, at MSG, best goalie. And I look on DraftKings, it's like it's a pick em. I'm like, what? How? I want that puck line the other way up, Doc. I want the puck line the other way. Uh, anyways, I'll be, I'm so glad we got these game sixes, fella. Uh, and it just proves that these NHL guys, when their back's against the wall, they find a way. So yep. get this guy a beer, my man. Presented by Labatt Blue Light, the pristine Pilsner. Fellas, enjoy your beers together so you can live life to the power of we. Always enjoy responsibly. Beer, Labatt USA in Buffalo, New York. <sighs> I could have used a couple of bat blues last yesterday on the on the course there. Eh? They just wanted to put on my head. Hey, ice cold the bat blue after I chunked another wedge or left it in the bunker on you. <laughs> Fucking bunker shots were in my kitchen. Ah, oh, it's tricky. There man. was a lot of sand in there. A lot of sand. But the, but with a lot of sand, terrible lies. <sighs> terrible lies. You just you gotta be on the upslope for them. You gotta like I'm you can't short side yourself. We short side ourselves a few a times. A lot, yeah. a lot. We might, whatever we paid for that yardage book. I've wasted a lot. We've wasted a lot of money in our life. We might as well throw that in the fucking trash. We didn't do one thing it said. But how about the one uh, you rip it, you little Glenn Healy off the tee on the par five? You're like, boys, I, I almost missed that one. So then I'm about to hit it down there. You're like, wait, wait, wait. You're like, maybe you should go this way. Which, by the way, you're 100 percent right. We should have went that way. I try to go over the tree, hits the tree. Up dog's got a buck seventy five in on a par five out of a gnarly lie. Hits into the bunker. I get up there. It's here. I leave it in there. It rolls right back into my footprint. You're like, oh, it ran right in your footprint. I'm like, I know. Just blast it out. I was, <laughs> just blast it out, fella. Oh, we could have used some blue lights, fella. We yeah. could have used some blue lights. Absolutely. Uh, Kale McCarr, two goals in game five. His second one as an ex-defenseman that only had 13 career goals and used to have a hard time getting it through. Dude, when he pulled and walked and ripped across the green, top side, right in the elbow, no, nah, nah, I never seen yeah, it like that. Uh, yeah. It was, it was, I said to you in the sprinter van, I go, up dog, that's the sickest shot maybe I've ever seen from a D-man. Yeah, and it's, why it's so sexy is because as he's coming across that center ice, say the center ice line, 
all the eyes, especially the goalies and the D trying to block it, they're all blocked. Because well, once you get over that, all the guys in front, you know, take away the vision of the goaltender. And as long as you label it, it doesn't have to be a rocket, but it was a rocket. It just needs to be placed perfectly. It could be a little sauce. And man, did he stick that right under the bar. So nasty. It was a great shot. It was so nasty. And listen, timely. If the Avalanche are going to come back from a 3-1 hole and win this game, win this series, Kale McCarr is going to have to continue to play exactly the way he did in game five. Yeah. But get that guy Labat Blue because that was National League. Big fella, I have to go with our boy Calvin Picard, who, uh, you know, first opportunity to play in the NHL playoffs. A lot of heat, a lot of pressure on him, buddy. At home, game four, down 2-1. He steps up, a big win in front of his folks, a big win in front of the Edmonton Oilers fans, uh, keeping these guys alive and giving them Staying a chance. Alive. Staying alive. Listen, it's, that, that position might be as tricky as the Toronto Maple Leafs goalie position, right? Like, what other team has as high hopes to make it to the Stanley Cup final than the Edmonton Oilers with 97 and 29 the last couple of years of their deal. And for it to fall on bad goaltending is a tough, tough way to go. But right now, uh, he gave him life. He's uh, he's going into Vancouver. He's going to see a crowd there he's never seen before playing in front of that. But wow, Calvin Picard, get yourself a Labatt Blue Light. Yeah, hopefully the boys had about six for him on ice after that performance in Game 4. Listen, Stuart Skinner didn't answer the media after Game Three. He apologized yesterday. I thought that was classy. Said, "Hey, sorry." Uh, you know, he was obviously emotionally yeah. in one, right? He didn't want to show how upset he was. So I thought that was pretty class act. When I think of Kelvin Picard, that's how I say his name, right? Pickard or Picard? I don't even have know. I been saying Pickard? I don't even know. I I I I I don't know what it is. But listen, I know this kid. He was our third string. <laughs> he was our third stringer in. Uh, it's Pickard. Pickard. He was our third stringer in, in Colorado. He was our American League goalie in Colorado. Yeah. I mean, in training camp, I used to light him up. I'm like, this guy's got, this guy's got no chance. Good guy, though. No, he great guy. Like good guy. But if I'm lighting you up, I'm like, this guy's got no chance. He's yeah. going back down the jungle. Yeah. But but nothing to lose here, man. Nothing. Like, if I'm him, if I'm talking to him, if I'm his buddy or brother or dad or fucking anybody, I'm like, fella, you have nothing to lose. You thought you were going to be a career minor league goalie, and now you have an opportunity to come in the Stanley Cup playoffs with the two best playoff players going right now, and Ekholm, and Updog's boy Bouchard, Right, like he should, ju- he should not be nervous. I know it's easy for me to say here, sitting in the studio, but he should be like, "Thank you, God." Yeah, this is the opportunity that I've been riding. <laughs> well said. I've been riding the iron lung for the last eight years, playing in Bakersfield, trying not to get skin cancer, <laughs> and like, and now I'm like, you know what I mean, ups? Like yeah, he should just, totally, he should come to rank going up dog style. What a like, great, you let's know, go. And that's the message. I'm sure Knobloch. I'm sure all the boys. I'm sure Paul Coffey is just pulling him aside and say, "What an opportunity." Just grab this by the balls and just run with it. Don't these players, nice. these players are going to give you everything they can in front of you. Make some quality saves. Limit the second chances and the rebounds, and we win this thing and we move on. That's truly how I feel. If they don't let in any bad goals, they will advance in this round, and they might be in one next round. But they can they can push yeah. if they can get just saves. Yeah. To me, that's the difference. Jeremy, why not keep it with the goalies, <laughs> yeah, Steve fella? Pipe Jeremy guy. Swayman, only one goal allowed in Game Five. Six wins in 11 games this playoff so far. Um, we talked about Boston's gutsy effort. God, but it was gutsy. I, I think it starts with this guy in the pipes who uh, the complete first round Toronto was absolutely hosed by these guys. Couldn't find a way to get a puck past them. Early in this round against Boston when they when they won game one, it was wow. You know, Florida couldn't find a way to get it past them. Then we saw a guy that became kind of human, but... You know, a gutsy got effort. Tired, the, maybe up. Yeah, like yeah, right. He's, he's not used to playing every other night. Totally. Right? He looked, looked at that. He looked I think he got human. tired. He looked he got human. tired. Um, and now finds himself in another do or die game six, back in his own barn, sleeping in his own bed, coming to the rink. Pretty familiar with who he's playing against now. Yeah. Um, uh, we obviously spoke about Florida being the team uh, that is going to get through this round. But but Swayman, get yourself a Labatt Blue Light. What you're doing for your squad is. Uh, is in timely fashion, and if you keep it going, you're going to force a nice game seven here for the fellas. Yeah, listen, I got a lot of money on the Florida Panthers. If they lose, I'm in one, and I'm, this guy's got me a little concerned. I, 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 the way he looked in Game Five, like he almost was like, "Bring it on!" Like I, I love this. Yeah, you guys think we're yeah. done? Uh, he deserves a blue light for sure. And last but not least, this guy's got blue lights in his fridge, 100 percent down there in Sunrise. Paul Maurice. His TV timeout was the perfect timing. I was yelling at the TV myself, yeah, being like, what the fuck is going on here, boys? Get her going. And he lit the team up. I mean, there's pictures of the trainers looking at him like that. And then his post-game post press conference, he's like, 
I don't excel at a lot of things, but profanity is one thing I excel at. And I thought those boys needed some fucking profanity in their life. I, I just thought it was great. I love Paul Maurice. If you don't like this guy, you're not a hockey guy. Uh, get Paul Maurice. I uh, love that blew up, dog. I love it. Uh, last but not least, you're missing curfew. It is milk cart time. And this could almost be like, we could do a poll on missing curfew. Prince, you want, does anybody know what the fuck goaltender interference is? Because I have no idea. And where I'm going with this up, dog, is, you know, you talked in the Tampa series about all the calls the Florida Panthers got when it came to goaltender interference. Our boy John Cooper, who's as cool as a cat, lost his, lost his composure in the post, post-game press conference because of goaltender interference. Now you see at the start of this series. That, to me, the one that they didn't get called against him on the McAvoy goal was 100% goaltender interference, right? Poked his, so to me, I, I think this is a rule that nobody still understands. The NHL has to fix it. They're smarter people than me. But I think human nature comes into it up where if me and you are in Toronto and we're like, fuck ups we just gave the last three to florida we can't call this one back because to me by the rules that was goaltender interference but i don't know the rule yeah um i think we spoke on this soaps you and me but you know the refs you talked about the refs having to do um post-game pressers right answer oh, answer to their calls you know I, I said that there should be more of videos alongside the referee explaining what the hell he was thinking and what the hell happened now in this case you know, we don't want these moments and these big games to be cited, to be decided by uncertainty and referees, you know, human nature decisions. But unfortunately, th- there'll be moments where it is. And in, in this game, you know, it's a tie game in the in the third period, and McAvoy comes in, and to me, Bobrovsky was completely interfered with yeah. in his crease. Ryan Callahan called Dave Jackson off of Dave's opinion, which was very vanilla. It was like, yeah, come on, Dave, give you the know, boy something. It was, he doesn't touch him. It's, uh, to me, it's a good goal. Well, Callahan stopped it, and it was argued. The guy came in and took out yeah. his foot with that, the stick, and then there's a goal scored a half a second later. That is, to me, interference. It should have been called, but... You know, we don't want these games to be decided like this. We don't want to yeah. complain about the refs. They have been doing a good job so far. Um, Decent job. Let's just figure out what the rule is. Move they were on. better in game one. They were better in round one. I know. Just figure it's out just what the weird. rule is. Move on. I think it's... Nobody knows the rule, though. Even Dave Jackson. You well, can we're see. on the fucking milk cart. Ooh, Dave, by the way, you know, called a few chintzy ones on me throughout my career. But I like Dave. But even him, I think he's scared to be like, I think that's goaltender interference because he's sitting back and he doesn't want to be controversial at all. I, I, I wish he would... And I'd like to see Tim Peel in that seat. Peeler, give him a bottle of wine and let Peeler go. There'd be a lot more. There'd be a lot more clickbait stuff coming. He'd be up. Like he'd be hitting the button. Let me come in. Let me come in. I got something to say. There'd be a lot more clickbait if Peeler yeah. was on there. But dude, I don't think he knows. I don't think Callahan knows. I don't think Steve Levy knows. I don't think you know me. I don't know. You don't know. I just and I'm going back to like the front of the net, man. Like, is there any way we can go back to allow these guys to to cross check a little bit? Like, let them move these guys in front of the net. And, and we won't have so many goaltender interference. But ever since Mayfield cross-checked Kucherov and they put this stupid rule in, everyone just stands in front of the net. The goalie, now they're flopping. And as soon as they feel something, they flop. It's just it's 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 heading down a bad, bad road up here. I don't think it's good for the game. And nobody knows the goddamn rule. What if what if this? What if there was the referee, the the uh, uh, Toronto, right? So the referee or, or New York in Toronto, and then one X player. The one X player. So you have the ref. A Toronto employee from the NHL and one ex player representing the players. And out of those three decisions, it's going to be two to one or three and oh. Yeah. And that's the call. That's the call. Yeah, I don't know who's Do it in the, quickly. I don't know who's in the war, but I know there is ex players in there. Okay, there is. Yeah, yeah. Do I they think, make the I decision think Larry, or is it ultimately on the rest? Is it Larry Murphy or Dan Murphy or not Dan? That's our boy in Vancouver. Uh there is some ex players in the, there. And like GMs. boxing, it shows the it shows the guy. NHL, goal. Boom, ref, no goal. Boom. All the no judges. Goal. Shows the judges. Quick call. It's like dodgeball. Thank you, Chuck. <laughs> Thank you, Chuck. Thank you, Chuck Norris. <laughs> Thank you, it's Chuck. Exactly, it's Thank exactly you, Chuck like Norris. Oh, and you're like, Ben, you're like, goal. <laughs> yeah. All right, boys. We're back in this. We're back in this. Up, dog. You got some, you got some great ideas, but that would be good TV. Yeah, yeah. That would be good TV. Spice so. it up a bit. Up, dog. One of our favorites coming at us here, buddy. Ottawa Senator. Good East Coaster like yourself. Drake Batherson coming at you. That was. Welcome back to Mr. Curfew. Uh, up dog, friend of the show. Good National League. Good, good style. Yeah. Yeah. Right shot. Long stick. Can bring it in side to side. I uh, got to know him 
through his social media and then met him this year when they came out to play the Ducks. But big fan of this guy's game. Uh, Drake Batherson, thanks for joining us, fella. Oh, pleasure. Pleasure's mine, boys. Big yeah. fan of the pod. Happy to be here. Yeah, I appreciate the support, fella. I love I love getting a little text from you or a little DM from you when you're uh, commenting on the pod. It's nice to know that that young National Leaguers are, are listening to our nonsense. They, it is, they, yeah. Washed and, up slugs. Well, yeah, and it's a guy that you'd probably want under your wing. Like, if you showed up to training camp as a free agent, you're like, hey, I'm, hey, Drake, let's go for lunch, bud. You're going to yeah. be one of my guys we're going to tell some stuff to this year, bud. <laughs> yeah, I tell you what, I would have liked to wield the net and see him on my wing just so I know if I give it to him that he's going to make a play, right? I'm like, if I give it to him, I know you're going to make a play anyways. But, uh, Bath, thanks for joining us, fella. Uh, you're in Halifax. How is it to be back home? And I've never partied in that city, but I've heard good things. Some of my boys went to university there. Um, fun little city, isn't it? Oh, it's unreal, man. Yeah, I, I love coming back in the summer. I uh, lived here for about seven years now, and yeah, you can definitely find a good time uh, downtown Halifax. And, uh, you know, it's only growing right now. The city's, city's fire and all cylinders, so it's uh, you know, it's fun to be home and uh, good to be back. What's that sick golf track out there that you always talk about? Well, there's, I mean, I don't know in Halifax. There's got to be some nice ones. Are you a member anywhere out there, or is it like, are you just trying to, like, dial in the weekend trip to Cabot? And how far is Cabot? Yeah, I've heard that's a yeah, no, Cabot's about, I would say, two and a half hours from Halifax. So during COVID, they're only letting Nova Scotians play. So I was up there about three or four times, and uh, no, it's great. My my dad's side of the family's from Cape Breton, too, so we get up there a lot. And uh, yeah, I'm a member of my hometown. Uh, it's called Kemlo. It's, uh, it's a small town I'm from, but uh, no memberships in town here yet, but I'll, I'll just join groups uh, here and there. How is the golf game, fella? I'm I'm a seven handicap. The updog is, says he's a one, but you know he could be a plus one. What what's your handicap? How's your game? What's your strength? What are your weaknesses? I might need a guest here at a a member guest of the new future. So talk, I I know you're a good guy to ride in the cart with, but what's the rest of your game? Yeah, no, I'm about a three. Um, I'd say I'd say my best part of my game is probably my short game. Um, the driver's all right, and then the irons need some work, but. My home track's a short course, so it's usually driver wet, which is which is good for me. Is it a little like Newfoundland? Like when I go back to see my folks, my fam- family's East Coasters, but you know the courses are you're playing on like the grass is different. It's like tundra up there, man. Like you know it's well, it's called the Rock too, right? Like is you know if you if your ball goes in the bush, are you in there like hacking off of like rocks or what's the terrain like in Halifax up there? Yeah, it's not bad. Pretty pretty rocky some courses, and then. <laughs> Other courses is, is all wood, so a little swampy in there. But uh, no, it's nothing like uh, your guys' course up there. Um, the fairways and all that are a little different, but you know, we make do. That's for sure. We got to we got to get you out to Big Canyon. Unfortunately, when you guys came out, you were, it, it fell on a Monday, the only day the course is closed. But uh, you played Pelican Hill. What did you think of that track? There's some sick views out there. Oh, it was sick, man. Yeah, that whole area is unreal. Um, coming where coming from where I'm from, you don't really see that a whole lot. You pull in, you got all the nice cars parked out front there. So <laughs> that was a great, great day out there. Uh, top track and uh, lost some cash, but it was a good day overall. Hey, I, I feel you, dude. That's where me and Updog and Loops used to play back in the day. And I remember when I first moved out here, I I pulled in. There was Rolls Royces and this and that. I'm like, man, I, I don't belong here. Then I remember one day I walked in there, there was like a a Michael Jordan golf bag. I'm like, no way, that can't be. And I walked in the men's grill, and and there he was, there he was, Black Jesus, just sitting there, the black cat, and boom. I'm like, wow, this. Okay, I'm not in Port Hope anymore. All right, this is this is pretty cool. This is pretty cool. Yes. Uh, Bath, I want to ask you about, you know, the obviously you guys, you know, missing the playoffs is not where you want to be, but you know, talk me through the year end when you're you're hanging out with the boys and and you said bye to everyone. How was everyone feeling? Looking forward to putting last year behind you because you guys got so many good pieces and you're going to be a good team eventually and it's hard to win the NHL how was the spirit of the boys when you guys finally had your year in Bender and we're we're heading home you know it's always tough I think uh you know we were out of it for for quite a bit but you know we got such a young good group of guys who you know we've been together for now five six years so uh you know we're itching to you know be playing hockey in the you know end of April hopefully next year but uh a well, great group of guys, and you know we believe in one each other, and uh, well, big summer, and we'll be we'll be ready to go next year. Yeah, and I believe in that, and and I believe in your group because of the skill, and I've got to know you and Brady and some other guys on your team. You got good character in there as well. But talk about your GM, a guy that me and Oppie both respect, and steady Stevie Steos. 
Uh, what was his message to you? Um, because I think he is the right man for the job. It's, it's, you know, we're going to talk about the coach he hired, but what was Stevie's message to you or maybe the core group when you're heading off for, for an off season? Yeah, no, Steve's a, uh, you know, a really competitive guy. And, you know, I got that feeling off him, you know, the first day I met him and he was great for us this year. Um, obviously brings a ton of experience, you know, playing over a thousand games. And, uh, yeah, the message was, uh, pretty much, let's just not make this, a uh, you know, reoccurrence again, uh, not making the playoffs. So, uh, you know, there's obviously some changes that are going to happen this summer already, you know, with our, our new coach coming in. So we'll see what happens. And uh, you know, the guys are guys, are, guys are still excited to, you know, to come into the rink and ready to go. Yeah, and one last thing about last year too. Obviously, you know, I was a big fan of DJ Smith. And listen, we all be in the league. I and mean, if you don't win, you can't trade the whole team. Guys get fired. Sorry, guys get hired to get fired. But then you brought in Jacques Martin and – I grew up a Leafs fan, and I used to I used to hate Jacques Martin. No kidding, I was yeah. like this fucking guy, Jacques Martin. I could but, believe he's still there, yeah. I guess, a head coach. Yeah, but how was it for him to, you know, not an easy situation for him. Hasn't been a coach for a long time. How how was it when he came in and, and him and Alfie and uh how was that under under an old school coach like Jacques Martin? Yeah, no, it was different. Um obviously we had DJ who's you know, a guy who who talked a lot and uh you know, and then Jacques came in, he was kind of just a, a common presence for the most part uh, and uh no it was different for sure obviously every coach is different but no i really liked him uh he was good for me um just giving me hints on certain plays and stuff like that feedback right away on the bench and and alfie was unreal uh you know obviously with his experience and in mind for the game he was he was great for us and running the power play and uh had t- had tons of stuff to come up with and stuff like that so uh, no, I really like them both, and uh, they're great ads for sure. It has to help having like a guy like Alfredson who, you know, in in the short term can come in. And I don't know if you remember watching this guy play, Drake. He was probably, you know, I, in, in his in his prime, he was just like this ox of a Swede that was like never did anything wrong out there. He was always like making the right plays. And Ottawa had such great teams back then, right? So it's probably good that Steve Steos, a message, he played the right way too. This guy was, when you say steady Stevie. Steady Stevie. Like he played no the right bucket. way. And those Oilers teams were great. And then you have Alfredson who wants to send that same message. So do you feel like that their experience and their track record has like kind of trickles down to the way they want you guys to play? And it's you guys are young. You guys will learn and there's growing pains. But you know, the message from two guys like that has to be like, hey, we're positive. We're going to, you know, we have our key group of guys. You guys are it. Like, we, is that is that the feeling you get from those guys? Yeah, no, it's great. Uh, you know, having both of those guys and even like Chris Neal and, and Phillips and those guys yeah. are around the rink all the time in the room shooting shit with the boys. So it's just fun uh, having those older guys play forever to come in and have a coffee and, and shoot the shit with them where in years past it, it wasn't like that. And, just nice getting those uh, those old guys back who, who played there forever, and uh, I think it's just great for for everyone having them around. Bath, I mean, the last two years, fella, you played all eighty two games, which yeah, I like wow. that. I like yeah. that. I like a guy that can show up every other night, and strap them <laughs> on. I used to, I used to hate coming in. A guy, I'm like, you're hurt, you're hurt, you're, not playing, you're hurt again. Well, what what's wrong? We got okay. a tummy ache. We've lost four straight here. You, how hard are you, bud? We're all going to be shipped out of town. So, I, I love that you played eighty two straight the last two years. You had a career year, fellow. You had 28 snipes. I watched a lot of your guys' games. I guess my question to you on a, on a, on a personal level is, what's the hardest thing for you now that you're, you know, 309 games, what's the hardest thing for you in the NHL when it comes to consistency? Is it, you know, what is it to you that is going to make the difference to be a playoff team, I guess is where I'm going, fellow. Yeah, I think just as a player, you want to be as consistent as you can on, on a nightly basis on I remember when I first got called up from the minors, I had a great start. I got like seven points in my first five games and thought it was going to keep going like that. And you, you find out pretty quick uh, that it's a pretty tough league. I think I went dry for about 10 games. So right then and there, I was like, oh, you got to be pretty consistent. Um, so that's my main focus, just trying to play the same way every night, um, you know, whether it's, you know, scoring or, you know, finishing my checks or anything like that. I think, uh, you're playing consistently as a player and as a team. It's only it's only going to help for sure. That's what it is, right? It's consistency. I mean, yeah. Sean O'Donnell told me my rookie year. He said, "Oh, I'll give you a piece of advice. You're never playing as good as you think you are, and you're never playing as bad as you think you are." Now, as my career went on, that was bang on. <laughs> there were some nights I'm like, "Fuck, I'm flying here, yeah. boys," and then other nights I get on the bird. I'm like, "Oh boy, I'm just looking at him. Please, my phone doesn't ring." But 
Consistency, I think, eh? Ups, that's 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 what it takes to win the National League. I mean, you look at players, and you might look at them as the awards they win or how many Stanley Cups they have or the playoff games, but you also say how the longevity. And in order to be a longevity guy, whether you're drafted first round, sixth overall, or whatever, it takes a guy that, that is consistent and you can be relied on. And, and Drake, like Obi's pointing out, he does watch your games, and he always picks you guys to make the playoffs every year. He's like, he's like this is the year. My it's kind of his downfall a little bit. I think he just likes. <laughs> I think right. he just Matt, likes wasn't the your guy. fault, fellow. Was your fault? He loves Brady. He loves you. I think I that's his Brady. downfall. But I love Brady. You know what? What you're able to do as a guy at 300 games in, playing all 82. You know, there's going to be a there's going to be a time where you feel like, okay, now I got to make. Now I got to be like the leader. Now, like I'm not, you know, a young guy anymore. And maybe that's like the difference in in where your team can go. Right? Like you take on this, like, hey, fuck, you know. I'm going to be the leader now this year. And you do have great young leaders, but consistency, yeah, I guess back yeah. to your point, consistency yeah. is tough, man. Yeah, no big time. Hey, I got, a, I got a golf question for you I forgot to ask you. You ever played the Hunt Club in Ottawa? Yeah, all the time. Huh? I, was just, I was just playing there the last like two, three weeks. I love it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My agent, uh, I ended up firing him after I got put on waivers. But Larry, Kel- Larry, <laughs> Did he ever Kel- take you out there? No, that's what I was gonna say. He was always a member there, and I, Kel- I like Brandon Bell and these old school Ottawa guys. Are like, oh, I'm never at the Hunt Club. Your agent's a member there. I was always like, I was at the show too, Bath. I'm like, he took guys never 3%. took me to the Hunt Club once. He's taking my three percent, but but it's a nice, it's a National League place, right? Yeah, I actually play with Brandon's brother all the time, Ben, and and his other brother Evan. So no, it's funny you say that. Yeah, I play there. I mean, I played there for about two weeks straight before I drove home. So you know, I love that track. Great group of guys there. So that's a fun time. Obi always talks about Ottawa. Like, that, you know, July, uh, uh, July, July, July 1. Bath, I used to go there with Richardson July 1, and I was seeing the ball well, fella. I was batting a thousand <laughs> right down there on right down there on Market Street. <laughs> I tell you what, it was a time. But, but is it? Yeah, is there some truth to that? Is like, are, are you loving like Ottawa, like come springtime, summer? Uh, I know it'll only get better when you guys are on a playoff run eventually. But and, and, a, and a downtown rink would help, obviously, right? If, they, yeah. if there was a downtown rink, there, and Bath, you could jump in here, but a downtown rink would be a huge, huge difference. Yeah. Is there any noise about that within the group and the fan base? And like, do you guys deal with that? Yeah, no, I feel like I've prepared it for about seven years and nothing really has come of it, but I think it's moving along more now. So, no, it's it's got to go downtown, I think, to, you know, for it to work even better. I mean, you guys know where that rank is and where the visiting team stays. It's not ideal compared to most cities. So I think with a rank downtown, it'll only help. And, uh, yeah, it'd be great to get it down there for sure. I'll tell you what, it was ideal, actually, Bath, because usually I was coming either from Montreal or Toronto, Maybe and I was either heading to Montreal or Toronto after we played the Sens. So I would take that time in Canada <laughs> to just kind of get on the pillow and just kind of shut her down, <laughs> recharge the big, all right, Montreal, all right, here we go. Where, where are we going now, boys? But <laughs> – <laughs> no, I, I listen. I grew up a Leafs fan, but up dog. Like what you're saying is, they're, the Sens fans are good fans. And a downtown rink with that, that downtown Ottawa is beautiful. It's a beautiful downtown. Uh, it would be jumping. They got a good young team, so hopefully that moves forward. But I got to ask you about back in the day, fella. Uh, you played for the Belleville Senators. I, I grew up training in Belleville with Brad Richardson. I went to Little Texas. I used to play against the Belleville Bulls. How was your time in Belleville? Did you join? It's a it's a good little city, good little town. Yeah, no, I loved it. I mean, I come from a really small town, so going there, it felt pretty big to me. So uh, my dad played junior there for the Bulls, actually, and my mom grew up there. So uh, she had some family and, and friends in town that took care of me. And uh, yeah, a lot of my two years down there, I had a, had a great time and enjoyed it. Yeah, yeah, there's there's definitely worse places. Eh? You could have been in Albany or a Bingo or fucking Syracuse. Oh, man, those places. Yeah. Those, yeah. Utica, they take years off your life. Where young careers go to die. Yeah, Bath, I, I remember when, when I, I went back down to the jungle at the end of my career and I was in San Diego and I come in, some of these young guys would be complaining about San Diego. I'm like, boys, I, I wouldn't be calling your agent. You know, next thing you know, you end up in uh, Albany. You're going to be wishing you're in San Diego. <laughs> yeah, it's probably one of the best spots in life. Yeah. Bath, I want to ask you, you know, obviously you, you want to be playing right now. You, you're not where you want to be, but do, are you watching playoff hockey? Does it does it inspire you? Are you watching your buddies you know in the league? Is it too hard to watch? Well, what, what is it for you in playoff hockey right now? Yeah, no, I'm I'm watching all the time. I mean, uh, I don't got a whole lot going on right now. Play golf, cook dinner, and then usually throw a game on. Got a few buddies uh, from around here playing, so so watching them and uh, I'll First round was was on rail and looking forward to the second round. It's fun watching your buddies, isn't it? 
I, I used to get to watch. I used to get to watch this guy when I was done playing, and I come back from Europe, and me and Lewis were like, "Let's go fire on the game and see what Upshaw's going to do tonight." And when your buddy's playing for the Stanley Cup, it's if it's not you, yeah, or your brother and about your boys, it's fun to watch, and it motivates you to get to, to back there. Yeah, and and just talk a little bit about you know the the Halifax. Let's just say the Halifax connection. Right, you guys have some incredible talent that's come out of there, starting from. You know, from Sid to McKinnon to yourself to uh, Marchant, like these guys, is it all? Is it a group of guys that like you know push each other? Is there something in the water up there? Who's the best golfer? I mean, what's what's it like to have like a good group of guys that you're pushing and training with like that? Yeah, no, it's great. Um, Marshy's actually my next door neighbor, so we're right next to each other in the lake here, and then. Sid and Nate are just down the road, and we got a bunch of guys, uh, you know, playing the minors. Uh, so it, it, it's a good skate for sure. Um, you know, it's fun. We we went to Ireland last year on a golf trip. Uh, me, Sid, and Nate, and it was, it was a great time. So well, the boys all love to swing them, and uh, yeah, no, it's just a great group, a uh, training group from coming from Halifax. Wouldn't really expect it, but you know, we're we're pretty lucky to have the group we do. A little different skate than we had up yeah. here. I wouldn't want to show hung, show up hungover to that one, eh? With Nate and Sid, and then you guys flying around. You're like, boy, slow down, eh? Oh, that's Monday. It's Monday here, fellas. Not as yeah, as a defenseman, you're fucked going against those oh, guys. But I, I was we we'd have like e- ECHL guys out here skating. They'd be dancing by me. I'd have to, like, I'd have to like two hand up. I'm like, if you go by me again, kid, I'll, I'm going to break your ankles, eh? <laughs> yeah. Uh, bath, ba- ba- talk about you know when I when I. You know, when missed the playoffs or my playoffs were over, I would take a month off. I, I know the game has changed. People, you know, I still think there's time to rest the body. Like we say, rest is a weapon. But what, what's, how's it been for you? When do you start cranking it up? When do you get back on the ice? Stuff like that. Yeah, no, I'm the same way. I usually take a month off. Um, usually get at it around end of May. And, you know, if I start too early and come July, I'm usually pretty rattled going to the gym like oh man i got two more months of this so don't want to start too early and, and burn out but uh, no definitely like you said gotta rest um you know get your golf in while you can and just enjoy the summer a little bit before uh you know the season comes back around pretty quick so just enjoy some time on the lake and, and hanging out no I, I think that's important i mean we you know we used to skate with some kids out here and chase DeLeo comes to mind he'd be on the ice two days after the season's over i'm like bud you know <laughs> You gotta, you gotta relax. You gotta relax a little bit here. But have you changed your workout? I mean, like the updog said, you're, you're you're turning into a veteran now, over 300 games. Or have you changed your workout as your as your career went up, went on? Or you, you you're kind of old school, just stick with what got you here. Yeah, no. After my, I think it was my third or, or fourth year pro, I switched over to uh, Andy O'Brien, uh, who trained Sid and Nate. So just kind of joined those guys and in the gym and you know doing turf workouts and stuff like that. And, that really helped me a lot. Um, you know, before that, I was kind of training back home in my small town, and uh, then I come up here and start training with these guys and see how hard they train. And I think just uh, you know that opened my eyes to you know what it takes to get to the next level, and you know it helped helped me a lot. And uh, I'll continue working with him this summer. So looking forward to that. But you no, know, it was it's been great, and uh, been enjoying it for sure. You're like Sid, slow down a bit. Sid. Well, I You're 36, but, bud. But could you imagine? Monday off. Can you imagine though. having those having those guys to like I'll push you and instead fuck of you, you, instead of you and Lupul. Yeah, yeah. I mean, my career might have been different. Oh, no shit. <laughs> I don't know if you went up to Hollywood with Sid and <laughs> Sid and the boys all the time, but uh, I mean, you have to. You got to sit back sometimes as a young kid in Canada and be like, "Fuck, I'm training with Sid the kid, and I'm you know I'm fucking chasing, you know, I'm chasing Canada these boys now. around the, yeah. that, that that's got to feel good, and at the same time. You know, you continue to push, and I know a bunch of guys that worked out with Andy O'Brien and what it did for their game, but you just got to say, like, man, my ceiling's got to go through the roof. Like, every summer I push with these guys and learn these new things. You know, who knows where my game can get, right? And the, and the leadership qualities you're going to get from it, that's that's huge. Yeah, it's crazy. I remember, like, my first training session with them, and, you know, you hear, like, how hard they work, and then, then you're in there right next to them doing it, and it's crazy, man. Like those guys, especially Sid, he's won everything you can possibly win. And, you know, he's like a, he's like a 19 year old kid when, you know, he steps on the ice and in the gym, he's, he's so hungry for more. And it's pretty cool for me to look at and uh, see every day. And same with Nate and Marshy, those guys are all built the same. So that no, definitely pushes you and, uh, yeah, just kind of opens your eyes to, you know, how hard you got to work to, if you want to be even close to them one day. So that no, it's great for me every day seeing that. And, 
pushed me uh, and helped me a ton for sure. I just wanted to ask, are you shocked what McKinnon's been doing this year? Like, did, was it something this summer that he was fucking pissed off about? Or He like, always looks pissed off. Uh, he always I looks know, it's off. like, smile a bit, yeah. Nate, but was there something this summer that you said, you know, I think he wants to go get that first heart trophy because he's, you know, what he did this year elevates this game to a... Because Obi's got money on it, I hope he gets a tight <laughs> okay, cool, I love it. Was there something yeah. that seemed different? I mean, he did get his cup a couple years ago and a big part of that, but, you know... I per, personally, he's been faster. Yeah, he's fucking, he was lethal this year. Yeah, he's an animal. Like, I remember the year they won the cup, he came home, took like two, three weeks off, and then hopped back on the ice with us, and missed a shot, or it was a tip or something, then snapped his twig over the crossbar. And I, like, I just look back and sit on like the stay, or he sitted three weeks ago. <laughs> he's like, he's pissed off. About it. Yeah, exactly. But, uh, yeah, no, he's, he's an animal, man. And, uh, yeah, he just – all those guys care about is winning and they'll do anything in a way. Uh, yeah, they bring that right in the summer seat. They treat it like it's, like it's a game. So uh, that's pretty cool to sit back and watch for sure. He's a beast. He's a beast. He, uh, I never played with him. I got traded the year – well, I was the reason the Avalanche got him, but they got the first overall pick. We had a tough year that year. <laughs> but he came out here last summer to, to hang for a bit at Cogliano's spot, and uh, he played golf with me, the updog, and – First of all, he bo- up he bombs it. I'm a bunter, but up he bombs it. And this guy, he, Nate, was bombing it. But when he shook my hand on the first tee, and I got pretty big hands, but I'm old now and play pickleball. He shook my hand. I was like, easy fella. Like, easy, hey, yeah. how she's wrong he is. And his, like, his legs and his ass. And, and everyone that met him at Big Canyon was like, couldn't believe it how, like, he's just an ox, eh? Oh, yeah, I mean, he's just built. Like, everyone asked me, like, how much, like, does he weigh or whatever. He's just around 200 pounds, but he's just, like you said, built like an ox, strong as anything, and just so explosive, man. It's crazy. You're doing two on ones with him in the summer. And you're skiing yeah. hurts. You can't just keep up. He's just floating around, dancing out there. So, yeah, yeah no, he's something else. And uh, not surprised one bit by the year he had. Just, just seeing him every day. And he's rich too. Eh? Oh, and he's fucking rich. Eh? That's a rich club. That's a well, rich one thing in college. Oh, that's yeah. a rich skate you got. Yeah. Sid's the most, the highest paid guy of all time. Nate Dog's making twelve. Marshy's making six or seven. Yeah, he's underpaid. That's a that's a nice. That's like well, lunch has got to be good around there, eh? Like, hey boys, I'm coming. <laughs> Sid, you got it today, or Nate, you got it today, fella. Yeah, no, it's tough for me to grab a bill. They don't let me. Yeah. Well, so. oh, I'm lunch every day, and uh, yeah, I, I try to pay, but. Sometimes they say oh, it's not good to be the smartest guy in the room. Yeah. Well, neither to be the poorest guy. Oh, no, that, that's nice skate there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, ba- ba- I got one thing, Bath. I want to ask you, this kind of goes back to playing in Ottawa, but just, you know, I played in Canada in two different situations. I played for the Canucks and absolutely loved it, and I played in Calgary, and I didn't want to leave my condo, and I, it was miserable. What I'm getting at is it, it, it's it's unique to play in Canada, right? It's, it's awesome. We get lots of attention. When things are going well, it's great. How, how have you embraced it? I know you're a good Canadian lad from Halifax, but, you know, do you love playing at Canada? Do you like that pressure? How is that for you? Yeah, I feel like Ottawa's just kind of uh, in between, you know, Montreal and Toronto and, like you said, Calgary and Vancouver. So I feel like we kind of fly under the radar a little more than those teams. And it's nice, you know, I'll go to the grocery store, like, and no one will even notice me. So uh, for the most part, you can just kind of go around town and be a, be a normal guy and go about your day. But, uh, you know, like, I've heard, like you said, in the old Vancouver and stuff like that, it's a little different. So, yeah. uh, no, I love it. I mean, it's close to home for me. My dad was in the Ottawa organization for a bit. My uncle played for the Sens. So, uh, it's pretty cool for me to be playing for them. And, uh, yeah, couldn't be happier. So, that's why Brady takes his tarp off. I don't know who he is. <laughs> yeah. And I, was wondering why, I was wondering why Brady keeps taking his tarp oh, off. I don't know. He, go, <laughs> he, he can go on notice. <laughs> oh, I'm just joking with yeah. that. I love when he's that big he's fucking sure. that big yeah. fucking head he's got on him that ass. I, I, fuck is he? A I just love the the videos that trickled out the last couple of years of him singing. I think it's Mister Brightside <laughs> or whenever he's got his tarp undone. I'm like, that's that's a hockey player right there. Look at that beauty. But uh, uh, shift gears into some you know some news. I mean, I mean, this will probably come out in a couple of weeks, but you know, you guys uh, recently hired new uh, face to the franchise head coach Travis Green. We were a little shocked because we had dinner with Greener not too long ago uh, when he took over for the you know the New Jersey Devils as the intern. But um, your thoughts on you know having a new you know, spokesperson behind the bench, a guy that we know well. I can tell you what I had his training camp in Vancouver. You're gonna 
you're gonna have to be in shape for that one. Uh, but which you will be. I have no question you you won't be. Get but the gro- get the groins loose. But listen, g- hey, listen, great guy. Demands a lot out of his players. Very direct, um, especially with his star players. So heads up. But um, no, just, what are your thoughts? Have you met Greener? Are you excited? What, what's the message amongst the boys here so far? Yeah, no, we're all excited. We were all chatting this morning. Uh, I don't know him personally, but my dad played junior with him in Medicine Hat, so he knows him a bit. Um, so my dad filled me in a little bit. But yeah, no, I'm excited to meet him. Uh, the boys are excited to to get him, obviously. And uh, I think he signed a four year deal, so he's gonna he's gonna be there for a bit. And you know, it's exciting for the city and the fans. And uh, yeah, just looking forward to training camp. Maybe not the the bag skates, but no, I'll be excited to meet him and get him in with the crew. I played with Greener. I'm like, well, I heard your training camps are hard here. Like, Who are you kidding, Greener? I saw him. Like, <laughs> hey, he was always like, day off. Fuck, we don't need to go out there. Come on. Boys, a weapon. What? We're practicing today. I'm like, Greener, now you're making these boys like, got to make sure they're in shape, Bob's got to make sure. They're... I'm like, I used to hate hard training camp. I'd like to know what NHLers can work camp now and not in shape. They're all in shape. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Right? But I, I guess, I mean, Torch's camp was the most hard, like the hardest camp I've ever been through. But then he gave you tons of days off. Yeah. Is Greener like that? I know you didn't make that squad. You ended up signing in St. Louis. But I think he's good with the days off. I know. I mean, we got one day off is when we landed back from China. Right. He's like, yeah, take the day. I'm like, I hope so. It was a fucking 25 hour flight. <laughs> like, give us, give us two days off, but <laughs> right to the Roxy, but yeah. But Bath, I think he'll be good for you because he's an old school guy. He's a good dude. Up dogs, right? Like he's very, you know, structured and stuff. But I think that will help you guys because he'll also let your offensive guys like yourself and Brady and Timmy do their thing. I don't think he's going to hold you guys back offensively, which I think will be a good fit with your young court. Yeah, no, I'm excited. I mean, um, like you said, everything you just said uh, sounds great. So I'm uh, looking forward to it. And uh, yeah, can't wait. How about any summer trips, buddy? You going anywhere? You got anything planned? Uh, you said Ireland you did last summer. Or are you going anywhere this summer? Yeah, Ireland maybe again this year. We'll see. Uh, and it works right now. And then I uh, got a bachelor trip in uh, Puta Canada at the end of the month. A little, we're staying at the Puta Spada golf course down there. I heard it's unreal. So, with twenty of us, and other than that, a few weddings. Not too much, man. I like kind of just hanging down out east and uh, hanging with my buddies. You're on the lake. You're on the lake. You said right. That lake life's awesome. I, I should have spent yeah, more time. I should have spent more time in the lake and less time in Hollywood. <laughs> you know, I think I would have been better off. You know? <laughs> have you been to George Street Festival before? I'll be up there end of July. Yeah, no, my mom's side of the family. Port of oh, they are right on. Yeah, we're from the other side there, so I used to go over there salmon fish with my grandfather every summer. And uh, but I haven't made it up to George Street Festival. No, I mean, uh, listen, I I'll that's a good time. No. Oh. I'll be full force if you want to come in, you know, for a little Villa Fella tour trip. Don't tell, there. don't tell Greeter you're going in to see the <laughs> Updog, though. Hey, don't tell Greeter you'll be you'll be on PP two before camp starts. You're like, what happened? Here? You're like, oh, you went to Newfoundland with Upshaw. You're on Power Play too. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Hey, Bath, uh, you're a great kid, buddy. We're pulling for you here. Enjoy your summer, and uh, thank you so much for taking the time. I know you're busy in the off season and, and doing your thing, but thanks for the support, buddy. Enjoy it, and we're looking for you to light it up next year, my man. I appreciate it, boys. Thanks for having me on.